in the cycle of life is being completed from the fire where the fire that's the beacons to the ancestors are going to come and they're going to look on the altar and they're going to see the offerings and the things that we want blessed and the things on the altar says and tells a story about this community and why we've come together. So be mindful of what it is that you want to add to your story or your voice that you want the spirits to hear that won't be spoken aloud but a vibration from your heart. And then the energy comes and we pray and we make offerings and those offerings go and the wind blows and it just flows. My friend Yona Frenchhawk was laughing at me. He'd been telling me about a retreat he's giving for employees of a transnational corporation that produces products for industrial agriculture. The alliance baffled me. This organization produces genetically modified seeds, pesticides, herbicides, chemical fertilizers, pollinating robot drones to replace the bees, while Yonaguska comes from a long line of Cherokee elders dedicated to spreading the spiritual wisdom of the Cherokee and seeking a balance between nature and humanity. For Yona to accept this dirty money seemed paramount to treason. How can you work with them? I asked. Yona smiled and nodded toward the earth and then the sky. In a good way, was all he said. And though I understood his intention, I insisted, what is this good way? How could it be measured? That's when Yona cracked up laughing. Have you ever seen a bear fall into a fit of laughter? I hope you meet Yona one day, and you surely will. He was laughing because this good way is better understood with the heart than with the mind. However, in this cerebral world of business, attempts at quantitative measurement are appreciated. Businesses are our greatest hope for a better world, now and for future generations. To ensure the future of our planet, we need to seek out new ways to produce and share abundance. You all represent these possibilities. So it is with great hope and all my heart that I present to you business in a good way. There are three key elements that we seek to balance in order to operate in a good way. First is self-interest. To create abundance and opportunities for development for the business and its employees, respecting our relationships with the past, present, and future generations. To extract resources for short-term gains does not respect the wisdom of our grandparents nor the well-being of our grandchildren. Community. To dream and plan together with the communities that support the business, sharing the abundance fairly. And finally, fundamental values. Discover the deepest values that all of the people in the business share. Then live those values every day as your mission and vision. As you can see, the key area is the union of the three elements in the center. Take a moment to reflect on yourself. Which of these seven areas describes the current balance in your life? Do you invest more time and energy in your self-interest? Perhaps in your community? your fundamental values, or a mix of the three. Raise your hand if you located yourself in one of these colored areas. In my experience, many people and businesses find themselves in the intersection between two of the three elements. Their challenge to find a better balance is to develop the third element that is weaker. To understand this better, I'll share three cases with you, one that represents each challenge. When I was young, I felt that the accumulation of wealth was inherently unfair. At my Harvard graduation, Alan Greenspan, then head of the Fed, gave the commencement address. His message was clear, make money, honestly. But I didn't even hear it. Together with a small group, we left our seats to attend a counter address in Harvard Square, where we swore we'd use our education to help people. So I set out to save the world, first as a volunteer in Guatemala. During six months, I learned from youth, including the author of this photo, about life. Together, we learned a bit of Photoshop, too. In the following years, I lived a very simple life, dedicated to education as a tool of social change. And we founded a Guatemalan NGO. We were promoting creativity in all sectors of society. This photo is of a rural middle school teacher. He's replicating our creativity workshop with parents of his students. Although I felt like I was having an impact on these communities, and I was living my values, I continued to run around seeking funding. 
I wasn't able to pay off my debt with Harvard, nor my trips home to see family, and I eventually owed more than $40,000. Without the direct support of parents and friends like Howard Lewis, I would not have been able to sustain myself. Seeking out a better balance, I did what so many do when money is tight, consulting. I was promoting creativity and balance in organizations and businesses when I began to notice many businesses face the challenge of improving their relationships with their communities. Businesses like this can be producing a profit and living their values, yet they operate in a bubble. They don't listen to the community's ideas, nor do they share the abundance they're generating. The community is like a web that supports the foundations of the business. Without their support, it will fail. This was the case at a retreat center that sought out my support to build their community. They faced many challenges due to the cultural and linguistic distance between the temporary foreign volunteers and the permanent local Mayan staff. Through a series of collaborative and playful workshops, everyone participated in the creation of a new vision and mission. We are a model of conscious community living as a spiritual practice. Respect was forged, relationships were deepened, and today there is much more trust and laughter between cultures. Our web of communities help us to balance. The third challenge is the classic business model, which seeks short-term gains for external shareholders. Although the people within the corporation may have the best of intentions, there is often no correlation between their values and the values expressed by corporate policies and strategies. I found a case like this in a factory that asked me for motivational support for their employees. They said all they wanted was more money. So the first thing I did was to meet individually with each employee. I heard stories of a veteran who had been traveling four hours a day for 30 years with no pension. Workers hurt due to a lack of safety equipment. I spoke with women and young people with families and dreams frustrated by the lack of opportunities for growth within the business. Afterwards, we all came together, including the owner's dog, to prioritize challenges and seek solutions. I understood more of their reality, and we established respect. As a result of these playfully serious sessions, the group developed a new mission and vision, which all agreed to support. We are a business recognized for having the highest standards of safety and quality. We grow with our team, respecting their ideas and collaboration. The owner also agreed to carry out the solution they designed. Though it was a small step, it did a lot to rebuild trust among the entire team. I admit, it's been a difficult road coming to terms with the spirit of business. I cry for the injustices promoted and supported by unbalanced corporations. Instead of vitalizing societies, they are a destabilizing force, fomenting inequality and dehumanization. Now I've seen it is possible to do business in a good way. In fact, I've become a businessman myself. Two years ago, a group of friends came together to create a new school to form yoga teachers. I facilitated four days of interactive sessions where we clarified what we all wanted from our community. From these sessions came our mission and vision, which now form the stable foundations of everything we do. Combined with our commitment to consensus, we are able to maintain our balance. Our shared values inspire us to generate abundance and share it with our communities. Because we love what we do, our commitment and passion ensure the highest quality. To finish, I'd like to leave you with three questions to reflect on as you explore strategies to regain and maintain balance. What are your dreams? Unleash your creativity to ensure the well-being of your business and employees in the short and the long term. Who else can you share this dreaming with? Listen deeply to everyone. What values do you share with them? Use consensus to create a vision and a mission based on shared values, and then live by them. When I dream of a better future, I think back to Yona, collaborating with these mega corporations. I imagine the employees that work with him, developing loving and respectful relationships with themselves, their communities, and the planet. I feel like Yona's work is the revenge of the Cherokee. Only instead of spreading lethal disease through inflicted blankets, Yona is spreading love in a good way. I hope and pray that you all will find your own creative ways to lead a more balanced life and develop more business in a good way. The generations of yesterday, today, and tomorrow are in our hands. 
Skitsa. Thank you. Gracias. Like I said, this is going to be the portal where this medicine will that Cliff is so kind to construct for us with some masculine and feminine energy. This is going to be the medicine will portal where we'll raise our prayers to be blessed. This will be the medicine will of all people, that connection, that connection in all directions. So this is what we're doing now. So thank you, Cliff, for bringing that medicine in, that, that balance. All right, so find you another square point to that. So probably you could just point right here. And in the progression of the ceremony, we began to sing other songs. One of the key songs that we sing also is the Earth Honoring Song. Sometimes the imperfections are perfect. Honoring Song in order for Agreed. the Earth to know that the people are still here, that we still care, and that we are keeping our ways and our traditions and our stories and songs alive so that the Earth might be healed one day whenever today's man is few, is done harming it and destroying it in all the ways that they do. So we sing this song to ensure the health of the earth and not only that but to teach our future so that they might hold on to this song and that they will have the medicine to heal the earth. So I offer this song in a good way, earth honoring song. <laughs> 